Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Bless God. You have rescued my life. Oh, we're listening to the, the song play in the background. You have rescued my life. And my response is hallelujah this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. He's rescued my life. I don't, I don't know what he's done for you, but I know he rescued my life. And my response is hallelujah. Earlier this morning, I was listening to uh, Wes Morgan. And he said, I choose to worship. Amen. He, he didn't say about what. But I can only imagine that whatever it is he was going through, he was just saying, I choose to worship. And so this morning, I dare you to choose to worship this morning. Bless God. Good morning, St. Matthew's family and friends. And we thank you for tuning in and, and uh, worshiping with us on this Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. This is truly the Son's Day. And we are just so glad to be here and to be able to lift up the name of Jesus. We're going to prepare now for our 91st number of Psalms. Psalms 91. If you have your Bibles, your tablets, whatever it is that you're using, we want you to get those things out so that you can read with us this morning. Amen. It's truly a, a blessing to be here and to see each of you. I'm looking at faces and I can tell you choose to worship. Amen. All right, everybody got it? You ready? Okay, let's read together. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say it, the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fire and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that the darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hey! Amen. Amen. Bless God this morning. We are, again, truly blessed to be here. We thank you for reciting the 91st number of psalms with us. That is truly our covering. Amen. We are going to have a word of prayer and then we are going to get right into this word this morning. Amen. 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 Let's prepare for prayer. Father God, we say thank you this morning. We are honored. We are amazed at your great power, Father God. We are stunned by your love and we are covered by your grace. And for that, we say thank you this morning. Lord, as we stand this morning, we're so excited because you have blessed us, first of all, to be here. We realize that some laid down last night that didn't get up this morning. But you saw fit to allow us to be here this morning, and we say thank you, Father God. We don't take this opportunity for granted, and we are going to praise your name this morning. Father God, this morning we choose to worship this morning because we realize you're worthy of the praise. You're worthy of the worship. 
bless your father, God. Yeah. In spite of our shortcomings, you have blessed us. And Father God, as I look out, I was meeting with some pastors yesterday, and they began to share how people are scared right now, Father God. But Father God, those of us who claim the name of Jesus, God has not given us the spirit of fear. What is it that we have to be afraid of? I've told you before, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. If I live, it's Christ. But if I die, it's gain, Father yeah. God. So there's nothing to fear. Yeah. So this morning, as we prepare to share with your children, touch us, Lord. Yes. I realize, Father God, these are not my words, but your words. My Lord. Father God, and I stand not because it's my will, but because it's your will, Father Amen. God. And I pray now that as this word goes forth, that it will touch your children both here and then those that are out who may be listening this morning. Yeah. Oh, Lord, you are truly our redeemer, and we know you live because you live in us. Yeah. So bless this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Please take your seats. We're going to read this morning from a very familiar passage and something that we've read from before, but we're going to, to tackle it a little bit differently this morning. Amen? We're going to read to you from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 12. And when you consider the state that our nation is in right now, and I'm not talking about the pandemic. I'm talking about all the other nonsense that's going on. All the other stuff that's going on. This passage is truly one that we can utilize to stand during these evil times. Amen? Amen. So again, we're going to read from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 12. And the word reads as follows. Finally, my brother, <clears throat> be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen? Not your might. <clears throat> in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Look, don't leave nothing off. Put everything on. You know, ladies, when y'all get dressed sometimes, one of the first things you grab is that spank. I think, baby, we got to make sure that we got to get put on the whole armor of God. Amen? Amen? That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devils, the tricks of the devil. He's a sneaky fellow, y'all. So that we can stand against the wiles. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yeah but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of, of this world, yeah. against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. So reads the word of God. I, I want to share with you this morning from this subject. When spirits attack. When spirits attack. Amen. Please be seated. You have to understand, spirits are going to attack, y'all. We're at war. Sometimes people, we act like we're not at war, but we are at war. I told you, I shared with you last week that we didn't have enough God to deal with what we're facing with, facing today. We didn't have enough God. And, and part of the problem is that people pulled in and only wanted $3. Right. That's right. Amen? They only wanted $3 worth. So we don't have enough God to deal with the things that we are facing today. See, what happens is if you're going to pull in, you need to fill up. Uh -huh. And I shared that with you last week. But when you begin to look at the world around us right now, if you're looking at our city and our county and our, our state and our country, we are in unprecedented spiritual attacks. Amen? We haven't seen anything like this. We, we've seen some issues with racism, but now we got the pandemic on top of the racism. And so we haven't experienced anything like this. Peace has went AWOL. Amen? Peace has just been, it took off. And so now we're dealing with all kinds of things that we're not used to seeing. The spirit of the Antichrist is rising up among us, y'all. And he's becoming brazen. He just becoming downright disrespectful. You ever had somebody, you standing with your husband, he dressed, and he looked good, and, and a lady walked by and looked at him like, like he a piece of uh, uh, Hershey's or something? Just disrespectful? That, that's what's going on right now. He's just being disrespectful, and when you look at Antichrist, he's an antagonist. 
People think that he's going to fill this world up with wickedness. Amen. But think about what we're seeing today. Are we not seeing wickedness in high places? You have, you have innocent people getting shot and killed and guilty people going free. Amen. That's what we're looking at right now. Hate and racism seems to be the main dish on the menu. That's the kind of things we're dealing with. Spiritual wickedness. Spiritual wickedness. But can I tell you that I'm not surprised? Mm -hmm. Not right. surprised at all, y'all. Because if we were to check the record, we would realize that in Paul's letter to Timothy, he had, the Holy Spirit had revealed this. He talks about the things that we were going to be dealing with right now. He revealed it to him in his letter, y'all. Look, go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Watch this. We're going to just look at this a little bit. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. And watch what it says. It says, now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Clearly, y'all, he wasn't stuttering. He wasn't mixing his words. It said the Spirit speaking speaks expressly, clearly. That in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Folks going to walk away from what they know is right. Amen. Now watch this. He talking about saved folks. He said, walk away from the faith. These are people that were already rooted in it. Said they were going to walk away from the faith. Amen. In the latter times, walking away from it. Mm -hmm. And then look what else he says. It says, some shall depart from faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and evil doctrines. Mm -hmm. Seducing spirits. Now watch this. It says, the work of a seducing spirit in latter times is to interfere with, mm. to take the place of, even to pretend to be the precious spirit of the living God. That's what seducing spirits will do. They're there to trick you. And listen, all of us has dealt with a seducing spirit one time or another. You might not want to admit it, but you have. Ladies, you've had a man come up and get in your ear and he begin to say some things, and you was like, whoo! That man, that brother had a mouthpiece. And then men, you had some attractive women come up and kind of, you know, women can flirt with their eyes. They don't even have to open their mouth. And they begin to seduce you by how they look. You deal with some of that stuff. Seducing spirits. They begin to work on you, y'all. They start to pick out. You know what they do? They watch. They'll say something to you. And then they watch what your response is so they know they need to stay right there or move on to something else. That's what seducing spirits do. They watch your response. You know how good our marriages would be if husband and wives were that attentive to each other. Amen. If we were that attentive to each other and what they, what they like and what they don't like. Then you have the ones who claim they are Christians, but they don't want to deal with anybody that doesn't look like them. Seducing spirits. That's what they got them. They think they, what, the way that's right into a man. They think it's right. Seduce his spirit is God. It's wrong. Watch what the word says. Then again, these are people that call themselves Christians. It says, but by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. That you shall love one to another. You don't get to be separated from me and say you love me. You don't get to call yourself a child of God and not want to deal with somebody that looks differently than you do. Seducing spirits. But watch this, y'all. Spirits are attacking. And can I tell you that we were in a pandemic before Corona ever got here. Amen? We were in a pandemic before Corona ever got here. See, the problem is, is that people just don't want to own up to it. Nobody was talking about it. Nobody said that. You know why we didn't say anything about the pandemic that we were in? Because we like the symptoms. That's what I'm just trying to get you to understand. We wasn't complaining about the pandemic because we enjoyed the symptoms. Do you not know that sin is a pandemic? Amen. Think about what this pandemic is doing right now. And then look at the symptoms of sin. Right? Sin will infect you. All right. You, you can be, if Wayne is over here sinning and I'm hanging out with him before you know it, I'm going to be sinning. Yes, sir. It infects other people. The other thing, when you start to look at this, sin is sending folks to hell. It's killing people, y'all. Is that not what this pandemic is doing? 
we have been in a pandemic. The difference is we don't like what goes with corona. We like the symptoms that went along with sin. I, I mean, truth be told, think about it. Sin just makes you feel good about some things. That feels good to the flesh. But I'm not here to serve the flesh. See, them days are long gone. Now it's about serving the spirit of God. But we didn't complain about it because we enjoyed it. Do you not know that, that, that when you look at sin, you can be infected over the phone? The folks, all that phone, them 999, whatever numbers. Yeah, crazy. Crazy. See it? Mm -hmm. You can be infected over your computer. Some of y'all bet not turn on your computer with a guess at the house and I'm telling what's going to pop up on the screen. We have been in a pandemic. We just like the symptoms. Mm -hmm. But if it had not been for the blood of Jesus. And listen, can I tell you this? Watch this. There, there's no mask that can protect you from sin. Amen. You can put a mask on if you want to, but it ain't going to help you from sin. Right. Amen. Listen, it's not going to mask can't protect you. There's no inoculation for it, but the blood of Jesus. That's all we have to depend on right now. Amen. That's all we have. But again, we're not calling up on the blood because we have enjoyed experiencing the symptoms. I think now some of you might be understanding why I told you $3 wasn't enough. Amen. Amen. Wow. That's a, all that came from verse number one. Okay. Let's go over to verse number two. Watch what 1 Timothy 4 and 2 says. It says, speaking lies and hypocrisy. Amen. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Now watch this. Professional liars. Some of y'all know them. Some of you got friends you hang out with. Professional liars. They have spiritual scar tissue. Now watch this. Have you, you know, when you look at the searing iron, that's what they use when they brand the cows. Mm -hmm. And you know how they leave that scar and the scar kind of raises up? Okay, that's what we're talking about right here. Watch this. Some of us are like that. And, and, and we have spiritual scar tissue. It's on this, y'all. We got spiritual scar tissue and it's affecting us adversely. You know what spiritual scar tissue does? Watch this. It dulls our senses of right or wrong. Amen. It kills your conscience. Do you know how bad of a state you have to be in when your conscience is dead? You don't care how you treat people, how you talk about people. You don't care about any of that that doesn't bother you because your conscience is dead. Go with me over to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And we're going to read, we're going to go through verses 1, 1 through 7. 2 Timothy, because I want you to, I really want you to understand this. Chapter 3. Verses 1 through 7. Amen. Now look what it says. It says, This know also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Amen. Perilous times. You are being exposed to intimate risk. You can't get around it, right? All right? Disaster is coming. You could be ruined during these times. Perilous times. No, watch this. All right? And I hope you don't mind. I didn't take my time because I feel like I need to teach this this morning. Amen. I need you to know what it looks like when spirits attack. I don't want nobody to be caught off guard. Amen. I want you to know exactly what it looks like when they attack. Second Timothy uh, three, uh, verse number two. Now look at this one. It says, "For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud." Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. Amen. Yeah, I love me and I love my money and I'm proud about it. Amen. I might be a little braggadocious, but I have a right to be. That's the kind of man, when that's how people are going to be acting. This stuff is going on. Then you have children who are going to be disobedient to their parents because you and all that time, things was cute. You just spared the ride. Now you're a spoiled child. And now you want to know why they're acting the way they're acting. Folks are ungrateful. They have no holiness about them. That's what this is talking about right here. There's no holiness there. Verse number three says, hey amen, look at this. Verse number three, look what it says. It says, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, Fierce, despisers of those that are good. Amen. Amen. Watch this, y'all. Look, look. It says, 
without natural affection. They are unloving and unforgiving. They don't even, it's not in them, y'all. Unnatural. Amen. And then it says, and they will slander others. Just talk about people. I don't even like hanging around people when they start gossiping and talking about folks. And you know what really scares me? When people start talking about the man of God. I've been wanting to do like they used to do back in church and tip out of the tongue. Because that's what happens. They're slanders. And then watch the next part. Now see, this next part tells you exactly the condition they're in, right? Because of what it says. It says incontinent. That means you have no control. You have no control. They have lost control, y'all. They turned their backs on God. It said earlier they had walked away from the faith. And now they have no self-control. Word says that they're cruel. They listen, they hate you just because you tried to do good. Oh, she just thinks she's so holy. She ain't that holy. That's what's happening. Look, because we're being attacked by spirits. This is what's going on. See, listen, we're under attack and we don't even recognize it. And so we have all this negative and demon possession type stuff coming up out of us because we haven't realized that we're being attacked. Verse number four says, traitors, heavy, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Amen. Now watch this. They'll smile in your face. But can I tell you, they ain't nothing but a backstab. That's what they talk about right here. Look, they conceded. They're concerned with self-satisfaction. And in all honesty, they really act like they have an allergic reaction to God. They're not trying to deal with spiritual things. That's how these people are coming across. And then verse 5 says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And look what it tells you. From such, turn away. Get away from them, y'all. Yes, you got somebody that you're dealing with like that, get away from it. Look, they act like they say it, mm -hmm. but they really don't want to walk in the power of God. Because I told you last week, that's going to require something, y'all. See, they just want the $3. They don't even want to walk in his power. But the word says, stay away from them. Because mm -hmm. you know why? Because they fake. Huh. They fake. That's what you're dealing with, fake folks. Mm -hmm. Look at verse number six. It says, Verse number six says, for of this sort are they which creep in the houses. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Now, ladies, watch these fellas. Watch these fellas right here. Because they'll come across like, you know, like, oh, man, he, 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 he on top of his game. But look what it says. It says, for this, for of this sort are they which creep. Into y'all, they sneaky. They doing what they doing so they can sneak and get close to you. That's not real. I just gonna tell you they were fake folks. Now look what he says. He says and lead captive. I, I know this doesn't apply to any of you, but it says lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with diverse lust. Amen. Led away with diverse lust. These brothers will try and weasel their way into your home, into your life, kind of get close to you, right? They begin to try to get your confidence. They want you to trust them. They'll say some things that'll make you feel pretty good and it'll sound like it's right. But it says they were weasels, y'all. They weasel, they're sneaking their way into your home. Watch this. They'll look at these women who are in need, women who might be struggling with depression. They are easily misled and often exploited. That's what these men are doing right here. They just being sneaky. They're not good. They're not concerned about you. Said they're often exploited. Listen, it's amazing to me, ladies. You will fight to keep a bad man and don't want to deal with a good one. All right. And you know what you say? I, 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 need, I, need, I need one that got a little edge to him. I, I need somebody that, well, what about, uh, what about so-and-so? He a good man. I am. Uh, I'll run over him. <laughs> That's who we at. See, just because he a good man don't make him weak. You talk about you'll run over him. God ought to be the one holding you from running over that good man he didn't bless you with. But we don't want the good man. We want the one that got the edge to him. He sagged some. I got a belt on, so it's He sagged a little bit sometimes. That's the one we want. 
because he got an edge to him. Stay away from these type of men. Watch this, y'all. They were rejects from the faith. They got twisted thoughts. They claim truth, but they're nothing but liars. And yet, that's who we're hung up on. Amen? That's who we're hung up on. That's who we've allowed to get in our ear and begin to seduce us. Now, can I tell you, when you look at the scripture, it seems like it was just focusing on, on, on women right there for a minute. But no, nah, it's not. Watch this, y'all. You know why it focused right here? Do I need to remind you about Adam and Eve? See, you think he's just talking about women. Now listen, the reason he's focusing right here, because you know what he know? This person, he know that if he get in her ear, he gonna have you. Because men can be so weak. And if he can get that woman just like he did Eve, Adam gonna follow. Yeah. We just, you know, you used to have that cartoon guy had the big old shoes, he just, he just gonna walk right on behind, because if he get the woman, they gonna get us. That's why he's dealing with this. And listen, you can say, oh, no, not me, Pastor. That's probably what Samson said, too. But he fell asleep in Delilah's lap. <laughs> now, I, I don't know. I just wonder what happened that made him fall asleep. Huh. It wasn't just rubbing his head. Huh. Huh. <laughs> but she got him where she needed. Uh -huh. Where she needed him to be. That's it. And look, it cost him, y'all. That's what's happened. See, listen. I'm just trying to get you to understand how they seduce you. Yes, sir. Satan might not come at you, but he'll come at that woman that you have yes, just so he can end up getting to you. Number seven says, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Listen, they always getting exploited. They never really seem to learn. How, how many times you gonna get a man that put his hands on you? You leave one and then get another one that's the same way. It says that they always experience this stuff, but they never seem to learn. Amen? They never seem to learn. Watch this. The gospel talks about spiritual attacks. Amen? The gospel talks about spiritual attacks. And, and, and we're seeing these spiritual attacks right now. You got people just acting downright crazy. Folks running around acting like animals. They're getting on some of them drugs and they just lost their mind. Evil spirits acting like animals. They're killing people. They're attempting to kill themselves because they're so caught up. They have been seduced by evil spirits. And the most amazing part is children of God are unprepared. We act like we have no idea what's going on or what we need to do. I don't understand how we can be unprepared when he's told us in his word, he said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, mm -hmm. and to destroy. Yes, so how is it that God's people are not prepared for what we're dealing, for, dealing with right now? How is it that we're not ready for this? And can I tell you, listen, he came to steal a while, y'all. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Like people be like, I, I thought the pandemic was gonna be better by summer. He came to stay a while. Listen, here's how, I'll tell you how I know, watch this. The word says he comes to kill. So he packed for killing. Right. All right? Then it says he came to steal. He packed for stealing. And the last thing said he let destroy. He packed to steal while, y'all. He came here to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He's not just going away because you're tired of it. He's here to stay for a little bit. Amen? We are witnessing spiritual attacks and we're standing there like we won't even claim Jesus. It's like I don't know what's wrong. What happened? Oh, I don't know. Ooh, I ain't never seen nothing like, I ain't never heard nothing like this. Why? He told us in his word it was going to happen. Amen? He told us it was going to happen. People all over the world, all over the country are scared. They have lost their mind. And look, and then you, there seems to be no in between. You got those who are scared, and then you got those who are just crazy. I had, I told you, I had a guy tell me, you're going to die for something. Might as well be enjoying life. We just got the two extremes. You have men and women of God. Can I tell you, you're going to be attacked. Men and women of God. We are going to be attacked. Amen? We're going to be attacked verbally, physically. 
financially, spiritually. We're going to be attacked. That's okay. Amen. All that's going on. Well, I tell y'all, listen to West Morgan. He said, I choose to worship. That's all right. Let him go ahead and attack. I, I choose to worship. Okay. My, you know, my response, the song that was playing earlier, it says, my response is, hallelujah. Attack me. Hallelujah. Talk about me. Hallelujah. Stab me in the back. Hallelujah. I don't care what it is. My response is hallelujah. The fact that you attacking me, tell me I'm doing something right. Amen. So I'm just going, hallelujah. Now listen, the church has been attacked. Amen. There are spirits who are coming into the church and they're hindering our ability to praise and to worship. See, you know what you got to do? Not today, devil. <laughs> not, not today. Listen, and don't be whispering it like you're scared he's going to hear you. See, look, we act like we're scared the same thing to Satan because he might pay closer attention to us. Look, Satan attacking you, you be like, hey, man. Bless God. They say, what you say? I say, hey, man. Oh, no. Not today, Satan. <laughs> now, listen, I, I had a, a, a co-worker I used to work with, and he had a son. And um, he was a little mischievous. He had a tendency to get into some things. Amen. And so what his mother would do when he was being bad, she would take Tabasco sauce and put it on her finger. And then she would look to him and say, open your mouth. Now, first of all, if I got a kid that's being mischievous, he that bad, I ain't put my finger in a little bad rascal mouth because he's subject to bite you. But she put the Tabasco on her finger and she go put it in his mouth. He was doing that one day, he, he wouldn't listen. He said, you're not the boss of me. See, that's what you got to tell Satan, y'all, sometimes. You, you got to be like, you ain't the boss of me. <laughs> you got to let him know. Like, what you scared of? He messing with you anyway. That's right. But he told her, he said, you ain't the boss of me. She goes, no, you came here. You, get the, he, you know what he did? He went like this, y'all. I kid you not. He went like this. I'm not doing Tabasco today, mommy. Let's <laughs> 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 listen. When Satan begin to act up, you got to act. Hey, I'm not doing that today, Satan. Ain't nobody got time for that. You got to stand bold and tell him. But listen, you can't tell him if all you got is $3. If all you got was $3, then you can't tell him. And can I tell you this? If you don't realize, if you don't see spirits attacking, you can't be mad at me. You want to ask for $3. I'm just trying to get you to understand we got to be filled. Amen. So we can recognize what's going on. Now watch this. The Spirit of God does not make us sit and worship in church quietly. I want to go to John 4 and 1. Did I give you that one, Eliza? I'm not sure. Let me I have it right here. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. Amen. But try the spirit, whether they be of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. See, you have to try this. That's why you need to be filled. How you going to try it if you ain't filled? I told you the other day, last week, people came in and got a dollar's worth of God, got a dollar's worth of Jesus, and then they took the Holy Spirit home with them. See, the problem about taking stuff home, you want to put it in your refrigerator. Then when you need it, which is, it's cold. See, that's how some of us are. And he told us, he don't like that, man. He wished we were either hot or cold. We're just lukewarm. We're trying to stick him in the microwave. No, you got to get all of it, y'all, so that we can fight these things. Now, watch this. The Spirit of God, again, doesn't make us sit and worship all quiet. People be like, in church, people are praising God and, 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 and just freely. The Spirit is just moving and we sit sitting. They'll tell you after church, well, I was, I was in the spirit. <laughs> the spirit of God will tell you just to sit there and not say nothing. Mm -hmm. If he did, okay, okay, that's how you feel. Now, why did he say I have the rocks cry out? Uh -huh. If all he needed people to do was sit there, he wouldn't have to have rocks cry out. Amen? Oh, no, when the spirit begins to move and he puts his hands on you, oh, you, got, you might not want to move, but you ought to say something. That's what our problem is. But again, if you quench the spirit, then how are you going to try it by the, uh, these other spirits? Now, here we go. Look. 
God has never tried to hide the fact that we as a church are going to be involved in spiritual warfare. He never hid that from us. People, you can't say I joined the church and it seemed like everything started to happen. Yeah, he told us it was going to happen. He told us about the thief. Amen. He told us clearly that we don't fight against flesh and blood. He said we are fighting against principalities, against powers uh, uh, of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. All you have to do is watch and you'll see that's what we're fighting right now. Spiritual wickedness in high. This thing going on in our country that's never happened. High places, spiritual wickedness. God told us again, go to 2 Corinthians 10 and 14 and watch what he said. Because I want you to understand what he was telling us. 2 Corinthians, amen, chapter 10 and verse 14. Look what he says. It says, for we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reach not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ. Now watch this. I want to read this to you again. For though we walk in the flesh, we walk in this flesh. Amen? Yes, we are fleshly beings. But look, but we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of this warfare are not carnal. We're not fighting carnal things right now. Spiritual wickedness. Now listen, it, it, it says, but mighty, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. First of all, understand this. God has warned us. Just because you walk around in the flesh, don't think that you're going to be fighting fleshly, fleshly victory. That's not what's coming at you. Okay? Look, you don't just get to tell Satan he don't want these hands. You can tell him, but it ain't working. Oh, you can't jump up. Oh, you don't want this smoke. Oh, it's a little bit more than that. We're dealing with more than that. Amen? Our weapons are not carnal. They are mighty through God. Why? So that you can tear down some stuff. Yeah. Amen? That's why they mighty through God. So we can tear some stuff down. What kind of stuff? Strongholds. Mm -hmm. Systemic racism. That's a stronghold, y'all. Do you not understand that burning up buildings is not doing anything towards systemic racism? Mm -hmm. It's a stronghold. You burning down a building ain't helping? Strongholds. The weapons that God has given us are the only thing that are going to tear down strongholds. Amen? Amen. So don't fight. Yeah, it ain't. I'm sorry. I don't want to bust nobody bubble, but they ain't doing nothing. Just burning stuff up. Here's what we have to watch this. Oftentimes in the church, when you look at the saints, we get attacked spiritually. And we act like we don't know what to do. Oh, Lord, Pastor, I'm just, I'm being attacked. I don't know what to do. Can you pray for me? And, and I'm saying something. I don't have no problem praying. I, I was talking, he just came in the office. I got here early this morning. I was like, oh yeah, man, I'm just sitting there talking to my father. Cry a little bit, talk a little bit, cry a little bit, talk a little bit. I don't have no problem praying, y'all. But you just said you don't know what to do. You should have been doing what you asked me to do. Should have been praying. That's what we do when these strongholds come. Just begin to talk to your father. There's something you can't handle. Talk to him. He'll help you tear down some strongholds. See, listen, y'all. It is the same principle. Okay? When we're getting attacked spiritually, that's what we have to attack back with. Amen? You heard those saying, fight fire with fire? I told you that boy, you fight fire with fire, everybody get burned. But see, we, now we're talking about spiritual. All right, all right. And you got to fight fire with fire. You've been attacked by spirits. You got to fight back with the spirit. Yes. Amen? Listen, we're fighting principalities. Amen? Powers of darkness. Spiritual wickedness. The Bible says in John, in John 4, 24, that God is a spirit. Yes, is. So when I'm being attacked by spirit, guess what I'm fighting with? Amen? You can still be trying to fight Satan with these if you want to. But when you fight with these, I'm fighting with this. Amen? Because he listen. If I swing with these, it ain't nothing really protect. I ain't protected. That's right. But if I swing with this, not only is this a sword, but it's a shield. I'm protecting y'all. He can't get to me when I'm fighting with this. Spirit and truth. Amen. God is a spirit, and that's what we have to use. Now watch this. Yes, spirits are attacking people in the world. 
Spirits are attacking people in the church. Yes, sir. So uh, it was a movie years ago, uh, Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. Who you gonna call? <laughs> <laughs> what, what you gonna do? You being attacked by spirits. You can't hit him with your hands. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do? Watch this, y'all. Revelation right here. Satanic spirits are attacking people. Do you not know? I mean, you get this, that the Holy Spirit can attack too. Do you not know the Holy Spirit can attack too? Listen to me. He attacked over in Acts 2. He attacked 120 people and they start to speak in tongues they didn't know. An unknown language. The Holy Spirit can attack. The Holy Spirit attacked new converts and they sold all their possessions and began to give stuff away to the poor. The Holy Spirit can attack. Over in Acts 9, he attacked uh, uh, Saul of Tyrus. Amen. And then turned him into a preacher of the gospel. The Holy Spirit will attack just like these other spirits are attacking. How is it that you can believe that these other spirits can attack, but you can't believe that the Holy Spirit will do the same thing for you? Amen? Oh, we believe in all these other spirits coming. I'm under attack. I'm weighed down with all these demons. But the Holy Spirit can't attack. Well, you think he will just sit on the shelf? Huh? You think he just, he just sit there watching? Oh no, the Holy Spirit can attack. I told you this, and this is a scripture, and we quote it. As a matter of fact, we probably quote it too much and don't really pay attention to what it's saying, but truly, greater is he that's in me than he that's out there that's in the world. You mean to tell me the Holy Spirit won't attack on my behalf? He just watching me get it? No. We have to get the revelation. If you start praying, that the Holy Ghost attack. Your family going through it. Tell the Holy Ghost to attack. Amen. You're going through it at your work. Tell the Holy Ghost to attack it. You got crazy folks in your neighborhood. And let the Holy Spirit attack. And I'm just trying to get you to understand that the Holy Spirit will attack. He'll attack our cities, our counties, our countries, our states, our nation. He will attack. But you know why he ain't attacked? Because his people who are called by his name. That's why he has an attack. You haven't asked him to. If you call up on him and ask him, to, I can't do this. I can't fight this on my own. He will attack on your behalf. Jesus said, behold, I give you power over all power of the enemy. He said, we have that, y'all. We sitting up here fighting with one hand. And we have power over all that the enemy throws at us. We just have to call upon the Holy Spirit and ask him. See, you know what I like when I saw this thought of the Holy Spirit attacking? I'm being aggressive. I'm trusting him to attack on my behalf. I told you when I was younger, people wanted to fight me. I would, I would throw my cousin's snap name out. I started talking, they'd be around, I knew they wanted to beat me up, and I would start, oh man, I need to call my cousin Snap, because these folks are acting like crazy. I, they must not know who my family is. How come we can't do that? What? Satan lost his mind. I, I know the Bible said he walked in to and fro looking for somebody, but you didn't mess with the wrong one today, devil. I'm about to tell my father. I'm about to call up on the Holy Spirit. You know he left him here to take care of me, to make sure that I was comforted. I'm a little bit discomfort right, right now. That's why I call. I'm about to call him. But you know what we do? I'm just going through it. I don't, I don't know what's wrong. You being attacked. You know what's wrong. We just not claiming what we have in Jesus. Can I tell you though? When you're being attacked. Watch this. This is how good his power is. And we've forgotten to claim it. It says in his word. If you bind those things, those spirits, bind those spirits that have been attacking you, mm -hmm. right? Loose the Holy Ghost to attack. Uh -huh. You're good. You're being attacked. And, and, and listen, the Holy Ghost is just like he's ready. Yes. He's ready to jump on him. And you ain't even called him out yet. The Holy Ghost is like, whoo, let me at him. He don't know who he messing with. Uh -huh. And you ain't asking. You haven't called. He might be you know how somebody get in a fight and then somebody grab them and you try to hold them back? Y'all be holding back the Holy Spirit. He ready to fight. Yeah. He ready to attack those demons. And the Holy Spirit, y'all trying to hold him. You know why? Because I'm just going through it right now. And it's tough. 
pray for me. I'm just, I don't know what's wrong. You holy, you quench in the spirit. The spirit is like, uh-uh. That's Claim it in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. I just have to deal with some things. You just don't have control sometimes. We gonna go through some stuff. Release the Holy Spirit on him. I'm just trying to get you to understand. He will attack for you. You just have to call his name out. Yes, sir. Amen. I don't care what it is. And so, listen. I know there's somebody who wants to accept Christ. Amen. You want to know God as your personal Savior this morning. But you're under attack. You don't feel like you're worthy of Christ. Can I tell you you're worthy? Yeah. Can I tell you that you're worthy? I know Satan is attacking. But don't let that cause you to feel unworthy. Watch this. It doesn't matter if you've got a bad attitude. Don't worry about it. If you feel with hate, you got issues with racism, you struggling with adultery and fornication, you can't even contain your tongue. You just curse just to be cursed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're struggling with some things. Yeah. Just ask God to release the Holy Ghost. That's, right. That's, it. That's all you have to do. Yeah. I'm just trying to get you to understand. We struggling because we act like we don't know what we're dealing with. Say, God, Father, I need some help right now. My, my, my brother, my friend, uh, Pastor Harry Ford, used to always say, I feel my help coming right now. I'm just trying to tell you, if you call up on him, you're going to feel your help coming right now. And when you begin to struggle with some things, he'll release your help. And listen, you know what? Let me tell you one thing I like about games. How they fight together. I, I like the games fight together, y'all. But can I tell you I got a game? And listen. When you start to talk to my father about releasing the Holy Spirit, it's a game, y'all. Yeah. And you will take off like you're ready to fight, and they'll get in front of you and begin to fight for you. By the time you get there, the fight's already won. Yeah. We have a game, and we won't even call on it. Yeah. Just ask God to release the Holy Ghost. And listen to this. Don't allow. You can say, well, Pastor, my sin wasn't on your list. It don't matter. Watch what he says. He said, I have given you authority to trample over snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. So if I left it off, he did All the power. So if you want to accept him, whatever your struggle is, I tell you to come. You have power of all that. We just got to ask God to release the Holy Spirit. Amen. So there may be somebody here this morning who wants to accept Christ. You, you've been under attack and you've struggled. Satan's been whipping up on you. Amen? Amen. He's been causing you some issues. You're having some, some difficult times. You just need to come to Jesus. Yeah. That's it. Because can I tell you, look, when you come, you got a whole game with you now to help you fight Satan. Amen. You are protected. I can tell you this what I love so much about the 91st Psalms. Because we're protected. We're covered. doesn't matter what come our way. We are protected. The 91st Psalms. Yes. And so I'm telling you this morning. If you want to know Jesus. If you want him in your life. You just need to come. Amen. He left that Holy Spirit here as our comforter. Amen. We're going to deal with some things. But there's a way out. There's a way out, and that way is Jesus. And so we want you to come this morning. And, and listen, you can reach us. You can call us, 722-2581, area code 209. You call the church. Somebody's going to get back to you. We just want you to know Christ. Yeah. Amen? We understand how busy Satan is and that he's fighting. He's trying to hold us back. Just like he's attacking you, he's attacking the church. The difference is we just release the Holy Ghost on you. Look, they'll just, they'll tell you, you got to pick your battles. There's just some battles he don't want. And when you release the Holy Ghost, he already know he's lost. He already know he's lost in spite. Yes, Amen. Amen. That's all we have to do. But this morning, if there's somebody, we say to you, come. We welcome you, not to join this church, this building. But to become a child of God, to, to come in and accept him into your life. Amen. You know, he gave his son for you. Just so that you might come and have a right to the tree of life. And so we say, come again. Call. You come by here. We're here on Sunday mornings. We're here on Wednesdays. You just come so we can. I, 
I listen. I have somebody I want to introduce you to. I, I have a problem with blind dates. I don't like that blind date stuff when people try to set you up. But this one time, I'm willing to make an exception. And I promise you, you're going to like the one I'm going to introduce you to. Amen? You're going to look. You're going to be like, oh, I got the right one now. <laughs> I want to introduce you to my father. Amen? All you have to do is come, call, so we can introduce you to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you this morning. It is now time for our tithe and offering. Amen? And there are some different ways that you can give. You can come by the church and drop it off, 1057 N Street. Amen? You can mail it to that same address again, 1057 N Street, uh, Merced, 95340. And then lastly, you can also do Easy Tithe. 209-252-3562. Amen. Again, St. Matthews, you know, God has blessed us because of our obedience. Amen. So this is your Sunday to tie. We pray now that you will bring your gifts. Amen. 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 We are truly blessed this morning. Thank you for joining in with us. God is good, y'all. And can I tell you? He's watching over. And if you don't know him, He's just waiting. Yes, sir. He's just waiting for you to call. Don't let, don't let the wild of the devil, devil cause you to think that you don't deserve to be saved because you do. Amen? Amen. Uh, let's all stand and we be get ready to dismiss. Bless God. Amen. I pray that God be with you this week, that you have a blessed week. Um, those of you who who I've talked to, and I know you had some struggles. We're praying for you, for you, for your family. Amen. Um, prayer is truly the answer for whatever your struggle is. Amen. 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 Look this way and allow me to bless you. May God's countenance shine upon your life. Yes, Lord. May his joy keep you from heartache and pain. May his love cause you to daily praise his name. Yes. May his grace be sufficient yes, to overcome all. May it keep you from sin, yes. but catch you if you fall. Yes, sir. Until we all sit at the feet of Jesus. And can I tell you, there's no sunrise and no sunset. Mm -hmm. Truly, we'll be free at last, but Christ will be at rest. May God bless you, St. Matthew, family and friends. And may he bless you and bless you real good. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord.